I'm bringing you back now to uh, the time when tea was introduced into Ireland. And the Irish people took to drinking tea like ducks to water. Well, it wasn't available in the shops when it came out first, but men used to go around from house to house in a pony and trap selling the tea, and they were called tea men. Now, it so happened that a tea man put up with a husband and wife in a single-roomed house in which there was only one bed. And he wouldn't have put up in that house at all that night, the tea man, only it was so wet and so stormy, he couldn't get to his own lodgings. Now he put the pony into a makeshift shed that was at the gable of the house outside. And when he went in, the young woman of the house, she had taken up a cake of bread out of the oven. And she brought the cake of bread across the floor and she put it up over on the shelf of the dresser. Oh, there it was, a beautiful wheel of bread with a cross on it like the four spokes that you see on a wheel and the lovely aroma that was from that cake oh the tea man's nostrils you could you could see him and you know that his teeth were swimming inside in his mouth for a bite of it <laughs> and she seeing the hungry look in his face she was going to break a piece off the cake and give it to him and the husband said no he said you'll only ruin that cake now if you break it while it is hot so can't he wait until morning like the rest of it well, that was that. There's no good in going arguing with a cranky husband. They knelt down and they said their prayers and they all got into bed, the one bed. The wife got in near the wall, the husband got in next to her, and then the tame man got in on the outside. <laughs> God knows, and that was a narrow enough bed too. And when one of them had turned, they'd all have to turn. <laughs> in the course of the night, you know, when the husband had to go out, he suffered from a little frequency. <laughs> yeah, that runs in families. <laughs> and when he'd go out in the yard, he'd bring the wife out with him because he was jealous to let the wife in the bed with the tame man. And she kicked up against going out into the cold and stormy night. Moreover, as she said herself, when she didn't have occasion to go out. <laughs> and finally, she kicked up altogether and wouldn't go out anymore. And then what the husband did, he'd lift up the heavy cradle with the child inside it, and put the cradle down on the bed between the wife and the tea man. And then he'd go off out in the yard, and when he'd come back in again, after shedding the tear for Parnell, <laughs> he'd lift up the cradle and put it back down on the floor, and then get into the middle of the bed. Well, the busy night he had, about four o'clock in the morning, the storm began to rise, and he heard it blowing off the roof, off of the shed outside at the gable of the house. And he forgot all about it, like one danger will make you forget the first danger. You know, if you cut your finger, you'll forget your toothache. <laughs> he forgot all about the taming and hopped out of the bed and went out to tie down the shed. And when he was gone, the wife turned to the taming and she said, now's your chance. So he got up and ate the cake. <laughs>